श्री श्री गुरु गौरांग गंधार्विक गिरिधारी श्री श्री राधा गोविंद जी की जय हरि बोल मिस वी लव यू लॉर्ड या जय श्री जगन्नाथ बलदेव सुभद्र सुदर्शन चक्र जीव की जय श्री गिरिराज गोवर्धन की जय जय श्री नीताय गौरांग की जय जय श्री नृसिंह भगवान की जय श्री एसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी मां शिव प्रोपाद की जय लव टू लव जय श्री लव भक्ति वेदांत नारायण गोस्वामी महाराज की जय श्री भक्ति रक्षक श्रीधर गोस्वामी महाराज की जय जय श्री रूपानुग गुरु वर्ग की जय श्री प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिव सरि गौर भक्त वृंद की जय श्री नवद्वी धाम की जय श्री वृंदावन धाम की जय जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय समागत गौर भक्त वृंद की जय जय गौर प्रेमन ओम अज्ञानतिमरंदशलाकया चक्षुरुन्मील तस्मे श्रीगुरव नम मुखम कौती वाचा पंगु वंगयते गिरी यत्तम वंदे श्रीगुरूंदीनता वंशकूपिंधुभ्ये च पतितनाभ्यो वैष्णवे नमो नम नमो महाबदनाय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायते कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नाम गौरतिशे नम निनंद नमस्तुभ्य प्रेमानंद प्रदाय मे कलौकलमशनाशा जानवापत नम हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका राधाका नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे बृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय बृंदाय तुलसी देवाय प्रियाय केशव कृष्ण भक्ति प्रदे देवी सत्यवचाय नमो नम श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे माय अनलिमिटेड दंडवत प्रणाम्स at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved guru dev nitya leela pradishta om vishnu pad paramahansa astatara sata shri shila ac bhakti vedanta swami maharaj shila prabhu pad and my same unlimited dandavat pranams at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved siksha guru devs nitya leela pradishta om vishnu pad paramahansa अष्टर सत श्रीशिल भक्ति रक्षक श्रीधर गोस्वामी महाराज एंड नित्य लीला प्रविष्ट ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस अष्टर सत श्रीशिल भक्ति वेदांत नारायण गोस्वामी महाराज माय दंडवत प्रणाम्स टू ऑल माय श्री रूप अनुगा गुरु वर्गा एंड माय दंडवत प्रणाम्स टू ऑल द वैष्णवस एंड ऑल द वैष्णवस वेल आई वाज थिंकिंग to read um gurudev's parikata uh i had that ready there yesterday but wasn't enough time and not only that but um i also want to read the whole chapter <laughs> like you said shamrani didi was doing it today and i have been reading it on my own but that that would be a very good topic to study to study that fifth chapter of adi lila uh and to go kind of deeply into the tatva siddhanta of nityananda prabhu nityananda baladev mm-hmm. 
I've never done that before with the whole chapter and the purports and everything, you know. Because there's some quite long purports are in there. But um, it's very interesting. And uh, the whole chapter, of course, is based upon the verses that have been written by Sri Damodar Goswami. Five shlokas that he composed glorifying Nityananda Bal Balaram. You know? And then there's also the beginning of the Chaitanya Bhagavat, first chapter. Uh, I told a little bit yesterday, but from that point on, um, you know, he talks for many, many verses about the glories of Lord Balaram, Lord Nityananda, Ananta Shesh, you know, he really goes into it, Vrindavan Das Thakur. He's glorifying his guru. His guru is Lord Nityananda. So, those are good topics to pursue. It's like, you know, when you're in the ocean, then waves are coming. Especially if you're in Jagannath Puri. <laughs> Very heavy crashing waves are coming. And you get lifted up on one wave, right? You get carried for some distance. And then, again, back into the, into the water. So, it seems like that, um, when we are discussing Harikatha, and studying together, going through different literatures, because I get many inspirations, you know, as we're going along, I get inspirations, oh, this we have to study. Oh, we have to study this. And then I then we go in that direction for some time, and then, oh, well, no, also this. This is even more important right now to study, you know? And it just keeps on going on in that way. <laughs> so the only thing is that we have shortage of time, you know? That's why we try to maximize uh, in Krishna Bhakti. We want to be fully absorbed. Fully absorbed in the nine practices of Bhakti. Do you know that Bhakti Yoga has nine different limbs, it's called. Nine different limbs. That our whole life is involved in doing these nine different practices of bhakti. You know? Damodar? Yeah? You can tell? Well, it's okay. Do the best you can. Shravan, Kirtan, Vishnu, Vishnu, then Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atma, Nivedana. There you go. Yeah. So can you tell what each one means? What is Shravanam? That's what we're doing right now. Hearing. We're sitting and hearing about Krishna. It means Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu. Vishnu means the Supreme Lord. Not just about anything, but specifically Krishna. Then it becomes bhakti. Hearing about Krishna. <clears throat> what does it mean to hear about Krishna? It means hearing Krishna's, first of all, his name. Then chanting his name. Kirtanam, Shravanam, and Kirtanam. Kirtanam means to chant. So Shravanam, Kirtanam. Then, gradually, an acquaintance comes for his form, his rupa, Krishna's eternal transcendental form. By chanting his holy names with faith and gradually entering into the mood of devotion to Krishna, then, first of all, his name becomes more and more, you become more and more connected with him through his name. Because his name is on the absolute platform. Uh, Srila Prabhupada explained this principle. 
that in the material world, the sound vibration of a person's name or of any object, you know, that sound vibration, the name that is naming the object, has no actual connection with the object, right? In Prabhupada, in the beginning, when I heard the, you know, the first days and weeks of hearing the philosophy, and uh, everything made perfect sense, and he was explaining that just like water is referring to the substance called water, liquid, right? But if you say, and suppose that you're thirsty, you're very thirsty, and you begin to chant, water, 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 water. Will you be able to quench your thirst? Will the water come? I think you'll get more thirsty. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So water, the word, the sound vibration of the word has no connection with the object. Right? That's because this is the relative world. This is the material world. And everything is made out of matter. But in the spiritual world, everything is fully conscious. Everything there. Even the water in the spiritual world is fully conscious. Nothing in the spiritual world where Krishna's eternal abode uh, is made out of dull matter that has no consciousness. Earth, water, fire. In the material world, this has no consciousness. But everything, everything in the spiritual world is fully conscious. Even the mountains, the stones, the, the dust on the land, everything is conscious. This is a very extraordinary thing to understand. And there, the connection between the object and the name referring to it is actually on the absolute plane. So Krishna and his name are non-different. There's actually non-difference between Krishna and his name. When the name Krishna is being pronounced by the devotee, Krishna is actually present in the sound vibration. This is the power. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he gave, you know, the eight verses, Sikshastakam, to guide the devotees uh, that they can attain spiritual perfection, topmost perfection, through chanting the holy name of Krishna. And Mahaprabhu is explaining that the first installment of chanting the holy name of Krishna, that there will be effects that will come. And the first verse is telling about seven different effects that will gradually come in the course of the devotee becoming more and more, uh, entering more and more into the chanting of the holy name. So that verse, the first verse, is telling all seven effects. Actually, Srila Gurudev's book, Bhajan Rahasya, and also his Sikshastakama book, those two books, they're explaining this. So, let's review. What are the seven stages and the seven effects that will ultimately come in the course of the devotee's spiritual life and his development, right? So, what's the first one? No, that's a different topic. Those are the seven stages. Oh, okay. Okay, so what's the first one mentioned in the first verse? Cheto Darpana Marjanam. Okay, what's the meaning of Cheto Darpana Marjanam? Cleansing the mirror of the heart. Yes. Cheta means the heart. The, and also it means the mind, cheta. So, darpana means the mirror. So the mirror of the heart is now covered with dust. 
Where did that dust come from? Countless lives. Huh? Countless lives. Yes. So much dust is covering our own perception, like a mirror. Mahaprabhu gave the example of a mirror. It's a very um, useful example. It's a very practical example. Because if you go somewhere where a mirror has been sitting for years in some house and nobody's done any cleaning, nothing, right? That mirror, that mirror will not be able to reflect any image because it's covered with thick layers of dust, right? So if those layers start to become removed, then gradually what takes place? Now the shiny mirror when it's more and more cleaned, even before it's fully cleaned, you're already starting to see the image. But when it's fully cleaned, then you see the perfect reflection. Right? So, this is the first effect of chanting the holy name of Krishna. Is that the heart becomes cleansed. From many, many lifetimes, uh, of material karmic reactions and also impressions gained in so many lifetimes. The heart becomes cleansed. The mind becomes cleansed. So, after that effect has started to manifest, comes the second effect. What is the second effect? Bhava Maha Davagni Nirvaparam. By the way, the first effect in, immediately starts to take place in the stage of Shraddha. Um, so, in the stage of Shraddha, with Shraddha means faith. Uh, so, in that stage, then Sadhu Sangha also takes place in the stage of Shraddha. Become, one becomes attracted to living with sadhus, saintly persons, and to, in, and to hearing from them and so forth. And in the sadhu sangha, then comes uh, what? First of all, accepting a sadhu, a pure sadhu, as guru, acceptance of guru. And then comes following the instructions of the spiritual master. So, uh, the, this, uh, yeah, the, the instructions and the activities that Guru is, is giving, when the disciple engages himself, that's called Bhajan Kriya. So, all of these uh, stages are combined with the first effect. The, and and anarta nivritti. Anarta nivritti means the removal of all the anartas. So those stages, Shraddha, Sadhusanga, Vajanakriya, and Anarta Nivriti. Anarta Nivriti also goes into the second effect as well. But this is in the beginning stages of, of Bhakti. And right from the very beginning stage there is cleansing of the mirror of the heart all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. But the second effect, now one enters into a stage in which the second effect starts to be experienced by the devotee. And what is that? It's called Bhava Maha Devagni Nirvapanam. It means the, each one of these effects are given a very beautiful poetic analogy by Mahaprabhu. He's now using the analogy of a forest fire that we know here in California. Blazing forest fires. Blazing forest fires, and no one can put them out. Right? So, Lord Chaitanya has given this example that the material world, which is called bhava, bhava means this material world that we live in, he says it is Maha Devagni, great blazing forest fire. 
Maha Davagi. Uh, and by the power of bhakti and by the power of doing the chanting of the holy names, then gradually the second effect comes, and that is that the blazing forest fire of the material existence, it becomes extinguished. Extinguished. How does that happen? We know that generally it's very difficult unless a rain cloud will come. Because they have different techniques of trying to fight the forest fires and so forth. But really, it, it cannot be extinguished unless a rain cloud comes. They can bring helicopters and pour water and all of that. But when rain comes, it's extinguished. So what, what does that represent? The blazing for, forest fire of material existence. How does that manifest? This blazing fire that all the living entities are, are trapped in this forest fire. How is that manifesting? Huh? Is there a spirit elevation? Yeah. 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 The material world of repeated birth and death. That cycle, samsara, samsara dava navaruta loka. So that cycle of repeated birth and death and all the concomitant uh, miseries that take place in the material world, that gradually becomes extinguished. When the devotee starts to come into the madhyam stage. And that madhyam stage really starts to begin at nishta. Nishta. Firm faith. And by that time, um, so many of the anartas, you know what anartas are? Anartha it means unwanted, unnecessary things that are hampering in the heart. So through the process of chanting, gradually they're becoming removed. And nashta prayeshu avadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya. When it's not fully removed, but a good amount, then comes nishta, firm faith. And that's the beginning of Madhyam. Um, with the Anartha and the Vritti, when these Anarthas are coming out, um, my question is, do they like surface? Where yeah, they sometimes. So, sometimes you, they're, yeah. they're kind of like maybe hidden, but then next thing you know, you're like kind of angry. Sometimes you're like, oh, where's this coming from? Uh, yeah. Maybe you have to get go through it to get to the other side. <laughs> In some sort of a way. Yeah. You know, something I've noticed. <laughs> Well, you know, just like in the Madhuri Gadambani, then there's a description of what is called anishtita bhajan. You know, that means unsteady. Nishta means steady, and anishtita means unsteady bhajan. And there are stages. So one's consciousness will undergo different changes and shifting, you know, uh, but it's not necessarily that you have to experience every anartha. No, no, no. If one is doing bhakti, then the anarthas are simply going, even without your knowing. But you will be experiencing that your faith is becoming stronger, stronger. And your understanding of tattva siddhanta is becoming more and more fixed. That will be noticed by the devotee. One time Gurudev was asked, Oh, we have so many anarthas. How can we become free from these anarthas, Gurudev? Uh, do we have to focus and really try to get rid of such and such anarthas? Gurudev said, you cannot get rid of anarthas in millions of lives. <laughs> Just trying to get rid of the anarthas, no. Only you do bhakti and bhakti will remove your anarthas. 
And here in the verse from Bhagavatam, the, the process is given that nityam bhagavata sevaya. That means serving. Sevaya means serving constantly. Nityam means constantly. Hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and serving the person Bhagavatam. By doing that, the abhadras, nashtak prayishu abhadreshu, all the inauspicious things in the heart, they gradually become removed. So no, you don't have to go through, that's something of a kind of like a new age or modern psych psychological, I think, psychology and, and psychiatry, where they have their theories about how the mind operates and how you have to go through such and such. And no, Krishna is doing it. He's in your heart and he is cleansing your heart. Krishna himself, and especially Krishna, when you begin to hear about him, Shrinvatam Svakata Krishna. It means hearing Krishna Kata. Srinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana. It's very glorious. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Very exalted activity to hear of the and chant about Krishna, Shravanam Kirtanam. Then, Hridi Antaksto Hi Abhadrani Vidhunoti Suhrit Satam. Here, Bhagavatam is telling that Krishna is the well wishing friend in everyone's heart. He's with you in your heart. And he's called Suhrit. The word Suhrit means a well-wishing bosom friend, a bosom friend who really cares about you, right? He is the eternal well-wishing friend of every living entity, every single living entity. Krishna is there in their heart. So, but when Krishna sees that, oh, my devotee, now he's hearing about me, then Krishna uh, takes a special effort to clean away the anartas in the heart, right? That's how the verse is telling it. Vridyantaksto uh, hi abhadrani vidunoti. Vidunoti means cleaning. And Krishna himself is doing that. He's cleaning the heart. We cannot clean. But Krishna, very easily, he can do that. So this is the power of bhakti. This is the power of devotional service to Krishna and especially the power of hearing and chanting because Krishna likes to see his devotees hearing Krishna Kata about him. This is our most important activity. Most important activity for the devotee is hearing and chanting. So, yeah, so then after this stage, when, when the stage comes called... Uh, uh, Bhava Mahadavagni Nirvapanam, then there is an actual experience by the devotee that he becomes quite aloof from the average suffering of the conditioned souls in this world, right? He becomes quite aloof from that and he becomes more illuminated and joyful. Uh, and the this great forest fire of material existence. He feels this relief that it's becoming extinguished, you see? So that's the beginning of Madhyam stage. And then the third effect, uh, third effect, Shreya Kairava Chandrika Vitaranam. What does that mean? It uses the moonbeams above upon the white lotus in Krishna. Yeah, such a beautiful analogy given by Mahaprabhu. The white lotus of good fortune. That means Shreya Kairava. The word Kairava is a lotus flower, but it's a particular type of lotus flower. Most lotus flowers 
they bloom in the sunlight. They can tolerate very hot sun and it causes the lotuses to open and sometimes they open in the day and then they close at night. But the example used by Mahaprabhu is Kairava Chandrika Vitaranam. Uh, Vitaranam means to cause to open, right? And here it is what is opening the lotus, Chandrika. Not, not sun, sun ray, but moon ray from a full moon. And the full moon is representing this process of chanting Krishna's holy names, right? That's the full moon which diffuses this moonbeam onto the lotus of our heart, which represents our ultimate Shreya, good fortune. Our ultimate good fortune. Hmm? Our relationship with Krishna begins to awaken. That is our ultimate good fortune. That is our eternal good fortune. And this is the beginning of it. So that third effect, <clears throat> then that third effect is represented by the verse nadanam najanam nasundiyam this is the stage of ruchi ruchi means taste so much taste for chanting so in that stage of ruchi then the devotee begins to actually experience this great good fortune now dawning and, 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 and arising within the heart uh, of his actual relationship with Krishna in the stage of Ruchi. And he becomes so much attracted and so much taste is coming from chanting, from hearing, from doing all the activities of devotional service. Mm -hmm. So that's in the middle of the Madhyam stage. So that's called Shreya Kairava Chandrika Vitaranam. Then comes the fourth effect. This is Vidya Vadhu Jivanam. Vidya Vadhu Jivanam. How is it explained there? Are you, you have that? It says, Sri Krishna Sankirtan is the life and soul of Vidya Devi, the goddess of transcendental knowledge. Or is this constant? Mm. Yes. You know, the, the actual meaning of Vidya Vadhu Jivanam is that now realized knowledge comes. Vidya. Okay. And that represented of Vadhu, Vadhu Jivanam, the life of the wife of Vidya. So this is representing the stage of asakti. And asakti is the stage just prior to bhav. So the stage of asakti means deep, deep attachment for Krishna. And in that stage, the devotee is now experiencing, according to the fifth verse of Sikshastakam. What is he experiencing? Bhai Nanda Tanuja Kinkaram Patitam Maam Vishame Bhavam Bhutau Kripaya Nija Pada Pankaja Stita Dhuli Sadrisham Vichintaya That verse Gurudev explained this very nicely, that this is the verse in which the devotee now, his eternal relationship with Krishna now begins to manifest in his heart. And therefore he's praying to Krishna in this way, O oh Krishna, son of Maharaj Nanda, I am your eternal servant. Uh, I am your kinkaram. 
And Kinkaram is a very specific type of very intimate ser servant. Uh -huh. Like the gopis have their kinkaris, their maid servants. So Kinkaram is given here. Patitam mam vishame bhavam buddho. But I have fallen into this horrible ocean of material existence. So please be merciful to me. Kripaya, nijapada pankaja, please lift me up out of this ocean and place me at your lotus feet like a dust particle. I want to be like a dust particle at your lotus feet eternally. You see? So this is called asati. So that's the fourth effect, right? Fourth effect, yeah. Vidyavadhu yeah. jivanam, then comes the fifth effect. What is the fifth one? Anandam buddhi vardhanam. Here, anandam ambuddhi means the ocean of ecstasy. Ananda means ecstasy. Ananda ambuddhi. Ambuddhi means ocean. Ananda ambuddhi vardhanam. Vardhanam means increasing. So, by the chanting of the holy name, in that stage, which is now the stage of bhav, now the devotee experiences ecstatic symptoms coming into his body. And he becomes overwhelmed uh, because the ocean is swelling uh, and inundating him. This ocean of ananda, which is coming from contact with directly with Ladini Shakti. No longer in the material identification at all. Maybe living in this body, but no sense of identity with the material body because the rays shuddha sattva visheshatma prema suryam su samyabhak those rays are now shining from the hearts of the eternal associates of krishna's and they're shining like tiny little particles of the rays into the heart of the devotee and completely elevates him far beyond anything in the material world that is called siddha Perfection. And he fully realizes his eternal spiritual form, uh, which at that stage is called Siddha Deha. Right? But that is that is realized internally. Then the next two effects are in the stage just prior to praying. Uh, Pratipadam Purnam Ritasvadanam. Pratipadam means at every step. Pratipadam Purna Amritas Asvadanam. Purna, the full Amrita Asvadanam, the full taste. Huh? The full taste. Purnam Ritasvadanam. So that verse is all about gopi praying and separation mood. Govinda virahena me. How does that begin again? No, that's the last one, the seventh verse. Yes. What, how does it begin again, the seventh verse? You gaitam. Yugaitam nimeshena chakshusha prabrishaitam shunyaitam jagat sarvam govinda virahename. So now the devotee is coming very close to fully developed praying in that stage. And what is the mood that, O oh Govinda, feeling your separation, even a moment feels like yuga. Yugaitam uh, nimeshena. Nimeshena means just a moment, but it feels like in your absence, in your separation. Chakshusha prabrishaitam. 
and my eyes are pouring, you know, so many tears. Shunyaitam jagat sarvam, and I'm feeling the whole world vacant without you. Govinda virahe namah, oh Govinda. This is the gopi's mood. This is the gopi's mood. Yes. Okay. So, this is a little bit of discussion of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's, you know, eternal instructions for chanting the holy names. We only have one left, and we can do that at another time. Jai Shri 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 Jai